We are live. <laughs> hey, crafters. Welcome to This Crafty Life Live, the show where two crafters spend an hour feeding their passions for all things that are crafty, and uh, they bring you along for the ride. Um, before we get started today, if you've got any questions or show ideas, uh, please feel free to email us uh, at thiscraftylifelive at gmail.com. Now, let me introduce to our hostesses today. First, we have May May. I know you guys recognize her from her YouTube channel. May May made it, uh, where she does everything from paper crafting to uh, upcycle projects. Uh, May May also designs a, a fun line of clear stamps and has a stamp club that you can be a part of if you'd like to. For those of you that love to uh, art journal or scripture journal, uh, May May has a special group on Facebook that are that's created especially for that. So you can do your uh, art scripture journals there. It's called Hide His Word in My Heart. Oh, and um, if you don't know this already, she's a pretty big fan of Periscope. I mean, you might even say she's addicted to it. So everybody say hello to May May. Hi, guys. The next we have Melody Lane. I'm sure most of you also recognize her from her YouTube channel where she does some really amazing projects some uh, tutorials and a lot of fun hauls. She is a Cricut product expert, so if you've got any Cricut questions, she can help you with those. Now, she also designs her own line of digital papers for all of you paper crafters out there. Uh, Melody is also the queen of giveaways. She hosts the most amazing monthly giveaways on her Patreon channel, so I know you guys want to say hello to Melody Lane. And down in the uh, notes below, you'll find links to all of May May and Melody's uh, social media sites. Uh, so you'll be able to find those as we go through the show. Now, I'll be monitoring the questions and comments. So, uh, you know, give me a shout out. Let me know where you're from. And um, any questions that you might have. And at different times throughout the show, we'll pause to answer questions. All right, ladies, uh, what's up on today's show? Well, first, I want to introduce you, who are our moderator today and always. This is Benny from Benny's Biddles, and we're so happy to have him moderating your chat. Cool. So what's up today, Mel? What's first on our list? Well, in today's show, we have Kim Maycraft from Made by Mommy. Um. And, oh, she'll be demonstrating a champagne loomless champagne glass. A loomless champagne glass. <laughs> you did it. If, if folks don't know Kim um, or haven't been to their cha or her channel, which I can't imagine that you haven't, Kim does a lot with the rainbow loom, but today she's doing a loomless project for those of us who don't have the loom, which is super cool. I was amazed when I went to her channel and looked at all of the different things. There's like so, I didn't know you could do all this with those little rubber bands. They always freak me out. I think there's no way they can turn those rubber bands into a turtle, and they do. It's just, <laughs> it's amazing to me. <laughs> we'll also be taking 15 minutes, not 15, whatever, I wish 15 minutes. We'll be taking a couple minutes in between all our segments to answer your questions. So as we get going today, if you have questions, just let us know, and we'll be answering those for you. Um, I'm going to start with a little bit of news today. The first news that we have for you is our website. I think on the last show we were telling you we were having a little bit of um, glitchiness getting our .com settled, but we've got it now. I say we, Melody got it. She handled that for us. And so go check out thiscraftylifelive.com. On our website, you'll be able to keep up with the shows that are coming up, who our guests are. We may do fun little different things here and there. You can also enter our giveaways by going to the um the website after every show. Now here's the thing about our giveaways. I always want to mention this in the beginning of the show. We ask our guests every time to have a giveaway for you and today is no exception, but we like to do that by having a secret word. God bless you, Benny. <laughs> by having a secret word. So listen for the secret word because you'll need it to enter the contest later on our website. And um, I wanted to talk about Blab. It's a new form of live video because I know you guys watching live love live video. And it's a lot like Periscope. Most of you know what Periscope is. 
Uh, but Bled, you can have up to four people in the video. And people watching, you can like click on a button that says take a seat. And you can also be in live. So if you wanted to ask a live question, the person hosting the video can let you in and talk live and be in video if you want it. Or you can just chat. You can share links. You can um, you also give props. Like in Periscope, you give hearts and things. But this way, it's like they call it props, and you click on their hands, so and then your picture shows up. It's really cute. Um, but tomorrow at 2 p.m., Crafts by Two is hosting a blab, and it's all scheduled. We could put the link on our website also for that. But it's going to be Crafts by Two, myself, Ken Hess from Ken's Creations, and Lori Nunemaker from Lori Stories. I think it's Lori Stories Blogspot or. Dot com. Well, anyway, it's to get to know some of the people behind the YouTube videos. The reason I wanted to do this, well, first I thought, well, let's just do a hangout with a bunch of YouTubers. And Crafts by Two said, let's do a blab. So I saw Ken Hess do a Periscope. I saw him do a couple Periscopes. And after the Periscope, I messaged him and asked him if he was on drugs. Now, I didn't think he was on illegal drugs. He had been sick, so I thought he was on medication that was making him goofy. And he said, no, he wasn't on any medication. That's just him. Because if you watch his videos, he's very professional and very, I don't, I don't know, he's just very professional. And on, in real life, I guess he's extremely goofy and funny and more childlike and I thought, well, people need to get to know you. I think we should just have a just a fun chat video so people can get to know us behind our videos. And so that's what brought on the idea that people need to get to know us. Because I think that's a good idea. I think it's a good idea. And the platform, the Blab platform, what I think is really cute, it reminds me of the Brady Bunch intro. Do you remember that? Yeah. Because it's like everybody's in a square, and so if you guys really work it out cool, you can like actually know where everybody is and like look at them when they talk. <laughs> <Yeah. really. laughs> because it is just like the Brady Bunch, but it's cool because we're here. You see me if I'm a, you know talking, or you might see Melody at the bottom or Vince at the bottom of the screen. On Blab, everybody gets the same picture space, so you're just having a conversation with each other. And I know from my Periscope followers. That if you if you go to Periscope on your laptop or your computer, you can't participate in the chat. But on Blab, you can participate in the chat using your computer. So Melody and I have talked about doing a Blab as well to let you guys see how that works for us. So if you're interested in the comments, let us know because we would like to see what you think. Yeah, I I think it's really neat and. To have people, like, because there's been many times in Maymay's Periscopes where I wanted to, like, post a picture. And I'm like, oh, I can't do that. <laughs> but I think in Blab you can actually post a picture. I'm not sure how it's not easy. But it's possible. And Or I could jump in video and show it to you. Something like that. So I thought no. that was a new platform not everybody knows about. And um, I'd love to get the crafting community more into the Blab. The, co the other cool thing about Blab is, when, like on Periscope, if somebody says, Maymay, what's your store address? I'm not able to put that in for you, so anybody that's in the room usually does it for me. But on Blab, I can literally type in the comments, too. So I can type links in Blab. And I think they call it drop it in because it's kind of below the go. I'm going to drop this link in. So it's really interesting. We, I think we may find a new platform that we all love. And you can do, like, it can be just one person doing a Blab. So it might just be me. But like Melody said, you could click on and be part of the Blab. Um, and start chatting with somebody if you don't mind your face show because, you know, it'll be a live situation. But anyway, to learn more about it tomorrow, be sure to check out the one with Crafts by Two, with Lori Nunemaker, with Melody, and with Ken Hess. And you said what time, Mel? 2 o'clock Eastern time. I think it's 11 Pacific time. And I have links on my Twitter and my Facebook and Google+. Plus. I shared it everywhere. And then you can go there and you can actually start chatting now or see who else is... Um, has shared it. You can share it on Facebook and Twitter just by clicking a button and you can subscribe to it. So I think it will give you a notification when it starts. And it's blab.com, right? I think it's blab.im. Okay, we'll put a link that's, below so that's where we can get to. I'm going to make a note. Blab link. 
I forgot to say something earlier. I forgot to tell you guys that at the end of the show, my kids are all home for the holidays, and they're going to come into the end of the show. So if you have questions for my kids, start putting them in the chat. So here's, I don't know who all can come in because I don't know who has gotten up and gotten around, but um, put some questions in the chat for my kids, and they'll come in at the end of the show. So we've talked about um, all those good things. Let's talk a little bit about the upcoming shows. We've got some wonderful guests, and since our last episode, we've gotten some even exciting news for for guests. We've added, I think, two or three more since our last episode. So we're going to run through those and let you guys know. Monday, January the 4th, on Melody's channel, you're going to see Cinnamon Cooney. So I'm excited about that. And that's just in a few days. <laughs> That hit me this week. I'm like, we got another show right away. Somehow I messed our calendar up and we're trying to get back to normal, but I think we're back to normal now. And then on January 18th, we have Lindsay Weirich. Is that how you say her name? I always say Weirich, and I don't know why. It could be. I don't know. She's the Frugal Crafter, as so many people know her as the Frugal Crafter. She has a YouTube channel and does all kinds of crafts and paints and does lots of stuff. I think she puts a video out every day, almost. A lot of videos. And she's doing a lot of live stuff, too. Yeah, she just started doing more live. On February 1st, we have Kathy, who's known as the Crafty Chica. I, we were introduced to her from Cinnamon, and so we didn't know a whole lot about her. And we were like, you know, the community needs to see her. And she's not new to the craft world. She's an uh, author. She's published. She's, her books are in Michael stores and things like that, but we wanted you guys to meet her on the YouTube side, so she's coming in. She's Kathy the Crafty Chica, so she'll be on Melody's channel on February 1st. And then February 15th, we have some new YouTubers. Do you want to talk about that, May May? Yeah, what we did, what we're doing is we're looking for YouTubers that have between 1,000 and 2,000 subscribers, and they're new, but we think their channels are really worth you guys checking out. And um, one that's near and dear to my heart, obviously, is Gareth Frewer. He's a very good friend of mine, and he's um, he just hit 1,600 subscribers yesterday. We were so excited. So he's on his way up. Also, Simon Hurley, who I've mentioned a 1,000 times, who will be on my channel tomorrow, by the way. He's the last in my Made It for May May series. Um, he does beautiful, clean, crisp. He's only 14, and the videos he does are so beyond his years, and we want you guys to see that. And we have a new person in the lineup. His name is Blake Leaphart. And we actually found him because of Kim's Made by Mommy Challenge, and he is amazing. We cannot wait for you guys to check him out. His channel is actually not even a 1,000. He's going to be our really newbie guy. And we're still searching for that one more because we're going to have four newbies on that show. So we're still searching for one more. But we'll find him, and we'll let you know maybe next week or next show or maybe even Monday because I've got one more person to look at, and then maybe Monday we can let you know who will be that fourth one on that show. And then February 29th, we have my sweet Petunia, who um, invented the Misty. And I'm excited. Her name is um, Ileana, right? Yeah, Ileana. She is um, coming on the show. She sent me a Misty to review, so next week you're going to see my first impression review of the Misty. I'm excited. Melody, you've used it on your channel already? No, I haven't used it yet. Crafts by Two has one, so we share everything in our craft room. So, but I haven't used it yet, just because I haven't needed it. I'm excited to use it. Um, I will tell you my very first impression. And uh, Sam was with me, my daughter-in-law. We opened the box, and we were so impressed with just the packaging. Like, I can't wait to show how well it's packaged and how rich and th it's just amazing that part we were really impressed we're like wow I wasn't expecting this so I'm excited to show the Misty tool and I'm really excited to talk to Ileana and find out how she came up with that you know that's pretty cool yeah. um, I have something fun for us today really quick before we um, interview Kim you know new, it's New Year's Eve so everybody's gonna start their resolutions tomorrow right that's we're supposed to <laughs> have you got diet on your list mail because isn't that on everybody's list yeah, but it never works, so I I would really like to just have a clean craft room. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Here's yeah. what I did. In 2013, I think it was, I did a video of crafty resolutions. 
So I went to our group, This Crafty Life Live on Facebook, and I asked people to tell me what their crafty resolutions were. And I also went to my Facebook group, which is May May Made It, and so did I. And I got some really good resolutions, and I want to share them with you guys, because I think this might spark you guys to pick some, too. Now, some people don't do resolutions, and I'm perfectly fine with that, because I typically don't either. Just call them a goal. How about that? So we'll see what happens. So check out some of these resolutions, and I'm going to see what Melody thinks, if she agrees. The first one I have is from Garrett, and he says, I have a drawer full of scraps. His resolution is to use them. How many times do we say, I'm using my scraps first? I'm really, I do that anyway. I kind of go to my scrap drawer first. Do you? I always have until I moved here, and we still have not organized everything. But I have a trolley with the different colored drawers, like everybody knows what I'm talking about, right? The thing with the different colored plastic drawers um, and I put paper in there depending on what color I use and that is going to sit right over here next to my paper and so I'll have it really handy right here so I'll go to that first but right now it's on the other side of the room <laughs> so we're not totally organized yet but once we do gotta be easy. Mine, is, mine is right at my hand right here so I can just grab it and it's the top two drawers I have a dark drawer and a light drawer that's how I do it like quick and easy because I'm not real good at I don't have enough space in this little room for all that this next one Melody you're gonna like this I think this is a cool idea Tammy Bird says her goal is to use all her toys in her craft room at least once or she's gonna get rid of them so here's what she thinks she's gonna do she's gonna buy stickers and every time she uses a toy she's gonna put a sticker on it and it gets to stay and then at the end of a allotted amount of time, if she hasn't put a sticker on it and she hasn't used it, it has to go. I like that idea, but I, I, <laughs> the problem I have is I've had things for so many years that I haven't always used, but I still have to keep them because someday I might need them. And when I moved here, I brought a bunch of drawers of full of crafting stuff and. <laughs> What is he? <laughs> George is yelling at me. No. Well, George has been going through the drawers and helping us clean them out and seeing if we need stuff. And he's wanting to throw some stuff away. I'm like, well, let's just wait. And, you know, if we don't have room for it, we'll get rid of it. So that that's a great idea to put stickers on stuff. But I think if I did that and George was in charge of throwing them away, I would put stickers on them even if I didn't use them. Well, there you go. <laughs> See, my thing is... um. I don't have enough space, but being a YouTuber, I don't want to get rid of it because one day I may see a project. I guess we're all that way, but one day I may see a project where just that specific punch is used and I want to know I own it. You know what I'm saying? It's just the hoarding. Yeah. Well, and sometimes I, f I realized, oh, I have that. You know, I bought it two years ago because it was on clearance, and then I used it. <laughs> I still think it's a good idea because I think about in my cabinets and things, I find that out of sight, out of mind is a problem for me. So I feel like that's a good idea inside cabinets and drawers and stuff like that. Listen to this next one. I think this is a great one, okay? This is from Deanne Mayfailer. I hope I said your name right, Deanne. Um, she says her resolution in 2016 is to use her stash. Now, this is so funny to me. Ready? I've been acting like my collection of paper is worthy of the Smithsonian or something. <laughs> It's yep. way too valuable and rare to use. Come on, she says. Gorgeous new collections come along every year. A, clo a closed hand cannot receive anything. Hope the things. Uh, hope this rings true with others. I love that. Do you keep your stuff? Do you, you we kind of hoard things, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, I I just can't throw paper away. I can see that. We know that you have a paper addiction. <laughs> We're aware of that. Here's the last one I'm going to share with you today. I think this is super cool, too. This is from Lynn Wilcox, <clears throat> and she actually had five listed. I'm going to read two of them for you, okay? Number four is quit letting making cards intimidate her. I'm so glad she's going to say, I'm not going to let that intimidate me. And the other one is she's going to upload her first ever YouTube video this year. Oh, that's neat. But now I've called her out, so now she has to do it. <laughs> Hey, Vince, got any questions for us so far? I do. I have a couple of questions about Cricut. So let's get to those real quick. Uh, Kim from Nevada uh, wants to know, is there a shortcut on design space to go back to your um, search designs from the workplace without going through the same search again? 
Uh, no, I don't think so. I think just upload images or uh, insert images, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'm confused, but I think there's not. Yeah. All right, well, then Jen asked this question. Is there any way to favorite or save certain images in Design Space uh, so she can keep track of her images that she uses over and over again? No. We would like you know, that feature. <laughs> that's a good idea, but you know what I do? I just will, this sounds crazy, maybe take it to space, but I'll put one on a mat and save that project and title it. So, like, if it's something I use all the time, like a card base, yeah. Title it card base. I do that. I have uh, a card base, I think even with an envelope. So if I ever need a card base or anything, I can start a project with that. And then I can add images to it. And then I can click Save As. So I still have the card base as it originally was. And then I have a new project, too. So I always yeah. go back to some of the like bases that I have and then I just add to them and click save as so the original one is the same like to That's start with. Mm -hmm. All right most people agree with you Melody that if you ever get rid of it you will need it the next time you get into your craft room. Yeah. Um, I did say that I think most people would think y'all are hoarders but I don't know that that's true or not. They would. Yeah but we're organized. Organized mostly. hoarders there you go that sounds yeah. good. Well, I do have a Facebook group called Craft Hoarders. If anybody wants to join that, we um, we don't really promote you to use your stash, though, because we love buying new stuff, but only when it's on sale. <laughs> it's a 12-step program, but the 12 steps are to the craft store. Yeah. <laughs> now, Sarah Longshore wanted to make sure that everybody understood that she is not a hoarder. She is a crafter. <laughs> There's a difference. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay is that all the questions so far that's it okay well now we have uh, questions for Kim from made by mommy YouTube channel okay. Okay. I'm ready <laughs> <laughs> how long have you been making YouTube videos it's been about two and a half years now oh wow You've really grown your channel in those two and a half years. Yeah, I mean, and to be honest, a lot of the growth was in the first year, and it's to some degree leveled off. Yeah. How did you come up with your name, Made by Mommy? Uh, true confessions. I owned the URL madebymommy.com from a couple years back uh, for a totally different idea that I had. And when I was going to put my first video up on YouTube, uh, it just made sense to grab that. You know, the original plan for me, you know, years back when the kids were younger, were to <laughs> make things to sell. So the, the, the physical object was going to be made by Mommy. Uh, but I thought it worked for this, too, because the videos were being made by Mommy and by children oh. were really the inspiration of my channel. So it still fit. <laughs> yeah. Um, what is your favorite craft? Oh gosh, I mean it's so hard for me to think just because I've been so deep in this YouTube rainbow loom world that there hasn't been time to do anything else. So uh, you know, I, I dream rainbow loom patterns <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Um, and oh gosh, I gotta like write that down. I've got an idea for something that'll work. Um, so it's hard for me to even remember that there are crafts outside of the loom. <laughs> and we asked some questions in our Facebook group, This Crafty Life. So if you guys are out there and you want to join our group and be involved with questions we ask everyone, join that Facebook group. But Edna Soto asked, What inspired you to start the craft challenge? If for those of you that don't know, Kim sends out a surprise mystery box of craft supplies to different YouTubers. And they're not all crafty YouTubers, but it helps get the craftiness in them to create something out of this box. You can only use what's in the box to create. And I have done one, and well, I have done two, and May May has done one, so you can watch those videos. She has a great playlist of videos, and I think they're a lot of fun. Some of them, even kids are doing them, and so it's a lot of fun. But 
so back to the question, what's <laughs> inspired you to start them? Well, I just really wanted to sort of spread the sense of joy and freedom and play that comes with crafting. And I found uh, that a lot of my contacts that I've made in the YouTube world were people who were in the toy space, and I've met singer-songwriters, all these really interesting people that would say to me, oh, crafting's neat, but I don't know how to do that. And I'm like, of course you do. Like, you did it when you were four years old. You can still do it. And so I wanted a way to bring all of my YouTube community friends together and to just, you know, again, because there's so much stuff on the Internet that you watch and you're like, okay, I, I could never do that. And that's inspiring to watch, but it's also a little bit off-putting. Um, so I wanted to create something where people could see the whole range of possibility, like what happens when you put the same materials in the hands of an uninhibited child who has complete freedom, and what happens when you put it in the hands of an adult who hasn't crafted in a long time, and then what happens when you put it in the hands of that artist, the person who is really comfortable with the materials, and you can see the entire range, it's not a contest, everybody's results are valid, and it's just so much fun to watch the process of all those people creating. I have to agree with that, that it does bring out the child in you. Every time I open that box, I turn into like a six-year-old girl, seriously. I, I can't <laughs> think of anything that I would ever make that I, I, that I actually put on my YouTube channel. I just... I just turned into this little girl. I was wacky and crazy. And let me show you what I made with my last box. Oh, <laughs> and we're also wearing something that came in the box, the Happy New Year hats. And a lot of people use these hats, took them apart, and used them in their craft. I thought, yeah. oh, my gosh, these people are so creative. And I, I don't know. I just turned into a little girl. And so I made this <laughs> out of some, and it has a jingle bell in her. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I it Is looks like a little thing. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm in the video opening this craft box, I become a little girl. I'm, it's I don't know. So a lot of people have named her. I asked people in my comments of my video to give her a name. There's all kinds of really cool names. And most of them have jingle in them because she <laughs> has a big jingle ball in her. It just makes me so happy. I mean, it makes me so happy to watch people, even in this world, who are crafters and are comfortable, to go outside of their comfort zones and to touch materials they haven't touched in a while. Yeah. And watching some people that have done this over months, I feel like, to some degree, I've kind of even opened up some of these artists to move away from what they had sort of been doing over and over that they sort of remember that they have these other ways to be creative. So that's that's been personally rewarding for me, but also it's just a great way for people, channels of multiple sizes, to get exposed to a new audience. Um, so there is a very strong collaboration aspect of it. You know, I, the playlist uh, you know always includes everybody, and the highlights reel where you sort of get a taste of everybody's creations. Yeah, it's I a love great that. way to find new people. And May May made this beautiful angel that is an ornament, something she would do on her channel, and I was like so jealous. Because I'm like, oh, that's so beautiful. And so like an adult did it. And when I opened the box, I am not an adult. <laughs> but I'm like that humility with the box. I'm the same way. When I opened my box and saw that pack of construction paper, I was like, oh, <gasps> Oh, construction paper. And when um, Kim just said, you know, it might be something you haven't touched in years, I, although I teach Sunday school and we use construction paper, I never think about it as something I would play with. I think about it as something, and I went, wait a minute. I love this construction paper. So I love the giddiness that you feel like. I think it's a wonderful thing yeah. you're doing, Kim. It, it brings us to our roots, and I love it. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. No, I mean, it's been, it's been a ball for me, and it's, it's sort of one of the directions in which I'm expanding from looming is this craft challenge, and it's also been a great way to meet new friends, <laughs> so I've been really grateful to, to get to connect to other people in the community. Yes, it's how we met you. <laughs> Yay! 
Um, and Valerie Rose from our Facebook group asked, how do you come up with the ideas you put in the box? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fun. Um, it's, you know, there's, there's an element of, I need to cover some bases, make sure that there's some volume of contents you know, that people will have to work with. So the construction paper pad is a great example. The box itself is always very useful in terms of making sure that there's enough volume there. So I cover a couple of fundamentals. I try and get something that's sort of in the category of a paper, something that's in the category of a paint, or uh, something that can be spread on a surface. Uh, I'll use that more broadly. And then it's the fun. and I always try and include something wearable, um, and I've had the greatest time watching people react to them, wear them, it's sort of the shared moment of toy, but then also deconstruct them in unusual ways. Um, I'm thinking right now of Presley at Act Out Games, who took apart a pair of glasses that we included and used it as the front of a Star Wars ad at. You know, it just never would have thought to use it as a material in that way, and so that's really clever. But then it's also just, you know, wandering down the uh, clearance aisle at Walmart and having a sense of humor uh, about it all and saying, what can be taken apart and be made into something else? And so one day, uh, post-summer, I was wandering Walmart and I saw the water wings on clearance. And I was just... I was like, there is so much you could do with these. You can inflate them and use them like they are, but you can also cut them up and they're just, you know, a substance, you know, so it's giving people that chance to break down a material that might be around their house in their clutter pile and say to them, like, hey, look around, you know, you've got things that can be made into something else. Yeah, and I, I just want to mention the Star Wars things and the Disney things and the barn that somebody made. Oh, my gosh. Well, things that they made were absolutely incredible. I showed some to George. I said, look at this. Oh, that's cool. I said, that was made with the same box I got. He's like, no, it wasn't. Yes, yeah. it was. <laughs> It'll blow you away. I mean, I don't know if you saw, a couple months back, we were lucky enough to have my, my froggy stuff participate. She's very busy, so I've only had her in the challenge once. But my froggy stuff made a living room out of popsicle sticks and yeah for like to the proportion of a doll and it is gorgeous uh, and yeah we were all looking at it like oh, I made a pencil holder <laughs> and she's got like a couch with these little boxes on the shelves and little books and little pom-poms like her dolls live better than I do That's all I have to say about that <laughs> How can somebody join the challenge? Okay, well at this point, um, we're open up to anybody. Uh, I have partnered with a mom and pop craft shop called Cook's Crafts. They're located in Queens, New York. Uh, Michelle Cook, who runs the store, was a very active member of the Looming community in addition to running her store. So I reached out to her when I started to be overwhelmed by the prospect of uh, putting together more than a dozen boxes a month. And so she now, who has a craft store, is my sort of fulfillment house. I sort of send her my ideas her way and then she's executing them. So we're currently collecting pre-orders for the January box. You can go to cookscrafts.com and that will link you through to where they're being sold on Etsy so that people I mean, if you want, you can pick up the phone and call her and get her your credit card, but most people would rather just type it in. So if you have an Etsy account, you can order a box. And uh, that's... How much are the boxes? The boxes are $25, including shipping in the United States. Okay. And uh, the international, I mean, I this is something that just baffles me uh, how much it costs for us to ship internationally. I really wish we could broaden it, but the same box that we're sending within the U.S., it's costing, out of that $25, about 13 is going to pay for that flat rate box shipping. If we sent that same flat rate box internationally, it's $65. Wow. Um, so all of a sudden, I mean, that's that's ridiculous. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't want regular people to be spending that money. No. 
Um, I'd rather, you know, if, if there are international people who want to participate, I could probably send them a shopping list, you know, that yeah. says, okay, get a pack of construction paper, get your toilet paper rolls, you know, get, yeah. you know, the, and, and join in um, virtually without actually getting that box. But, you know, within the United States, it's a, it's a good value that uh, there's always the contents that are in there exceed the retail value of the box. Yeah, there's uh, so much in there. Yeah, we pack a lot, and it's also, you know, Michelle who, you know, has, you know, wholesale access who's helping us sort of leverage that to make a, a more affordable combination of things. Um, that's been a lot of fun. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, the, you know, for full transparency, the larger YouTube channels to participate, um, I gift their boxes to them because they're doing me a service. Um, you know, they're letting people learn about my channel uh, on their own and that's a great gift so I do cover those boxes but there's so much interest um, but we always we're, we're keeping it at cost at that $25 sort yeah. of. <laughs> I actually probably put a couple dollars on top of every one of those boxes but $25 helps me from going bankrupt <laughs> <laughs> And that's your giveaway for the day, too. Is yeah! They know what they get to choose from. Yeah, so if you want the December box, which, you know, you can always already see the playlist for, if that inspires you, I've got a couple in reserve um, that I can send one of those away as the prize. Or if you would prefer to be a part of next month's mystery, then you can opt to take the January box instead, and you won't know what you're getting, but that puts you in the same category as these lovely crafters you see below on your screen, <laughs> um, who are brave enough to take the true challenge. And um, I love including new people in the challenge. Uh, anybody who creates a video that is, uh, you know, Child friendly, you know, nobody can construct something that's inappropriate because children watch my channel. Uh, and if they make a try, then they're going to be in the playlist too. Um, and that's fun. So I'd, I'd pick the January box <laughs> if it was me. Get surprised with the rest of us. But yeah. <laughs> the thing I want to point out is for if we have people watching today that are have a YouTube channel and maybe it's a young YouTube channel and you're trying to get some exposure. It'll cost you $25 to get the box. You can participate, follow the rules, and, you know, family friendly, and you can be a part of this playlist. And that's how Melody and I found um, Blake Lee part. We were like, what? This guy is awesome. People need to see him. And I think that's a great way for you to get your channel out there. I, I think what Kim is doing for us is, I mean, look, Kim's channel is established, and I will give anything to be where she's at, but if I can be a part of that, too, in that community, and she's willing to open that door to us, what a great way to spread um, YouTubers around. 25 bucks. You can't get better than that. Yeah. yeah. Collaborating is one of the sort of, you know, if you read your YouTube creator handbook, collaborations are one of the sort of secrets of growth. It's like number one. <laughs> Yeah, I and mean, so I've, I've been very grateful that I can sort of leverage my position to help out people who are starting at a much tougher time. The market is much more saturated than it was when I started my channel, uh, so it's harder to get noticed. Um, so going into a collaboration like this, and I try my hardest every month to have, you know, at least one other channel that has my size audience, um, because that's going to mean that there are that many more people bouncing through the playlist to watch all the videos that have sort of never been exposed to you before. Um, and we have time for one more question, and I, I really want to know this one because I was just amazed at your channel and how many different loom charms? Oh how many different ones do you have? Do you know? I mean, there are hundreds, aren't there? Uh, yeah, there. I mean, I know there's at least 250 because when we, when I had um, the videos curated for Looming.com, uh, which I can talk about if you want me to, but when I had my videos curated for Looming.com, they curated 250. There's a couple that I told them to exclude because I knew they were not um, up to the standard that my videos are now. 
um, or that had been sort of refreshed and redone uh, for better coverage. But yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not even the most prolific loomer. I think Kate Schultz has about 400 on wow. her channel. Um, there are, you know, at this point, you know, when I started, every design was, you know, sort of mind-blowingly new. You know, now there are thousands of unique designs available on YouTube for anyone who has rubber bands and a dream. <laughs> that is one thing that I have hoarded is I bought two looms so I could put them together and make all these wonderful things. I have a case full of rubber bands and I've made one bracelet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. I mean, I, I, started, I started because my girls wanted to and we started on the bracelets. Um, but for me, it's always been about the charms. Um, the, the charms to me are much, much more exciting and interesting. Yeah, and I think so better. too. Um, so that's where my focus has been. Yeah. Vince, do we have any questions for Kim? Um, we did have one question. Somebody wanted to know if they could see some of the crafts that people have made from the box. Uh, I know y'all were showing a couple of things earlier. Maybe you could show those things again, um, stuff that y'all have made. Well, um, she, they can watch, um, she has a highlight video for each month that highlights some of the things in it and then she has a playlist of all the videos too but there are some really amazing things I don't have any pictures or anything everybody's getting hers yeah I, mean, yeah, I don't have the physical objects everybody keeps them obviously but the highlights reel are your best quick way to sort of get a, a sneak peek at what's happened that month and then the playlist is right after it to check out the whole shebang on how somebody put it together and there's Mamie's Oh, it's so pretty. My angel. I See, love it. Hers is just so nice, and I just can't be an adult. <laughs> yeah, I can try to really come up with something big to do next time. Da -da -da. <laughs> this is the month that my froggy stuff made a living room. I made this pencil holder. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. I love those colored popsicle sticks. Yeah, they're great. That, that that's um, those are from a company called Ebu. Um, that I, I really love their stuff. It's it's really good. <coughs> okay. Now, Kim, you have a um, you have a tutorial that you're going to do for us today, and you're yeah. going to the panel, right? Yeah. You guys ready? Yeah. Here we go. Da -da -da. Well, let's see what colors are going to show up best. So since it's New Year's Eve, I figured we would make the camera closer. Oh, yes, the oh, center. There we go. Put, cool. Get the hand behind instead of in front. I'm having trouble with left and right here. There we go. So since it's New Year's, I thought we'd make a little champagne glass or sparkling grape juice glass, depending on your preference. Um, and to make these. This is my primary tool. This is my, for those of you who care, my Susan Bates Quicksilver Crochet Hook in 3.75 millimeters. Um, I actually really like the Susan Bates hooks as an alternative to the hook that comes with the kit. They've got a, you can use any crochet hook, but the shape of the hook itself matters for this craft. Um, because you need to have depth enough to hold more than one rubber band. Some of the crochet hooks, your rubber bands come flying off mid-project and you get much more frustrated. So that's a piece of advice. But should I go ahead and make this? Sure. Is this how it goes? Okay. So the hardest part in starting these projects is always step one. Step one is taking a single rubber band and wrapping it around your hook twice so that you then have your three loops then taking two rubber bands holding those tight sliding it to the center and that is the start of nearly every one of my loomless designs I made it look very easy when you try it the first time you are going to shoot rubber bands across the room do not feel <laughs> bad about yourself I get the comments that are like 
I tried it once and I couldn't do it. It's like, well, yeah, I've done this 7,000 times. <laughs> you know, of course you couldn't do it the first time. Try again. So you've got your first one on there. We're going to make a second one for the other. We're working from the bottom of the cup up. So we need to make the other edge of the cup. Got my two bounds. No. Go into the center. So now I'm just going to, because we want the bottom, the bottom edge of our cup to sort of cross over. So we're going to take our, we have the two on here. Take the one you put on first over the end of your hook. And then take the other one. Oop, higher up over your hook so that now you can see this is what's going to be you know the two sides of the bottom of your cup there and there and so now when you do this in a video tutorial we could like watch and pause it and then do it yeah you know it's been an evolution on my channel if you watch my very very first videos I do them in real time so you know uh, you could do it with me without pausing. But I ended up getting a lot of comments from people that were more advanced loomers because while I'm talking, they were getting bored, you know, or they would say I talked like a robot because it would be sort of start and stop. Yeah. And I'm like, well, it's really hard to, like, talk and do simultaneously. Right. So now my videos are a little bit more edited and you would need to pause. So if there's like a, like, we're going to make the stem now, right? And that involves repetitive steps. So I'm sliding these two bands through. And then you're going to be repeating just hooking bands here two more times. So that's the sort of thing that I would fast forward. And right. you, would then, you would then hit pause until you've sort of caught up to where I am. Um, and that's sort of my current style which is great for the people that have been around for a while, and it's a little frustrating for the newer viewers. Um, it's a tough balance, you know, to figure out what to do. But I, I make sure everything is there, that if you hit pause, I don't assume you know anything. Um, it's all there. You just might have to That's good. hit that pause button. And so in your videos, you do it on the table, and the camera is very, like, close, so you can see it better. Yeah, I mean, my my range is about that big when I'm normally filming these, so you can look at it really close. And the other piece of that, and that's the magic of two and a half years of making these videos on little rubber bands, is that I've learned to work in that much space. Again, if you watch my older videos, it's very frequent that I'd be making it, but then I'd move outside yeah. of that camera range. That too. Still do sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And that's always frustrating. And I, you know, I, it's just, that's one of those nuisancey things about YouTube because YouTube won't let me re-upload in the same place a video. Yeah. So I've got videos that I know do that and it breaks my heart. And I've re-recorded them so they exist somewhere else. But their search algorithm still sends you to the one that isn't as easy to view. And that's, ah, oh, maybe yeah. my pet peeve. <laughs> so I'm going to switch colors here. You don't have to switch colors if you only have one color of rubber bands. But if you switch colors, it makes it kind of look like there's a drink in the glass. So yeah. I like to choose either a similar tone if you're trying to represent sort of a clear glass. Um, but you can do a contrasting color like that, just depending on what you like. Um, so those go through. And I'm going to work the side first and then come back to the middle and then do the opposite side. So this is going to be like that. You know, if you're picturing sort of where is this going, what is this it looks like thing? it takes a lot more rubber bands than what you're actually using because I'm kind of amazed at how fast it's coming together. together. Yeah, yeah, I mean, well, there are people, I mean, this is why people always write to me, make 3D charms because there are people making incredible three-dimensional designs and I stay away from them because they eat up so much material to make the same effect. Um... You know, if you're, if you're going to hang this thing on a bag as a decoration or as an ornament, 
you know, for the kids on their backpacks. You make it three dimensional, you need four times as many rubber bands. And, you know, for children, you know, who, you know, don't have unlimited access to hoarding materials, um, <laughs> you know, that's just never the same answer. So, anyhow, so this is my side of the cup, and now I'm going to do the middle row, which involves just bringing my hook back into the chain over here. And then working my way up with the drink color for the middle. It's just amazing to say at all. It's just amazing to me how you come up with these different designs and build them, you know, from scratch. Yeah, as I say, I dream about this, but yeah, there's if we want to get into made by mommy pet peeves. The design process is extremely time consuming. Like I make my designs extremely simple to repeat. But yeah, the process of making these designs in a way that takes the fewest possible steps and the fewest possible rubber bands is hard. So it breaks my heart when other channels re-upload my designs. Oh, like yeah. when they just watch my video and then show it again. Because it's like, hey, come on guys. Like show the finished product, show a variation. But like, don't don't repeat my steps because you're gonna like, you know. It's like stealing your design. Yeah, but there's there's no protection for that, unfortunately. Uh, you know, there's only protection if they re-upload my actual hands and face. So we've got one more pair of bands to complete that other side, and so this is our structure. And you'll see the, the middle one has only one of the darker color. The two side ones have an extra because that's going to sort of fold across the top to make the top of a cup. And to close this all off, you just take a single one of these little loom bands and you pull it straight through all of these. want to make sure your hook is aimed down or you're just going to catch those loops and make yourself very angry. <laughs> put both sides onto your hook and pull this side through that side to create a slip knot that holds it all together. Oh wow. And then you know sometimes it's a little bit of fiddling to get your shape exactly right. But that's it. And if you want you could actually it would be fun. You could use these as wine charms. Like you have a hosting a party. Put them oh, around yeah. the bottom of your cup. That's <laughs> such a good idea. You know, and everybody has a different color, so you know whose drink is who at the party. You can make them super <laughs> fast. That didn't take you long. It was like four minutes, and we talked through most of it. Yeah, I mean, I can make one of these in 90 seconds if I'm not, you know, explaining what I'm doing. So if you watch the channel and you decide to make a set, it won't take you very long to make a set. And, you know, this is 10 cents worth of rubber bands. Um, and... <laughs> If you're not going to attach it, you can hide this too. The same way you would hide the end of yarn. You know, you tuck it in to the back you of your shirt. You made letters before too, like each letter of the alphabet, which I think is really cool. I did. Yeah, and those are all loomless too. The, the whole alphabet I did loomless uh, because the three rows on the loom actually very quickly felt limiting to me. Yeah. Um. And when you're working freeform, you can go in lots of different directions. Um, and also to me it was about, I had too many kids writing to be saying they didn't have looms. And that always makes me want to change what I'm doing so that they can be included too. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's fun. So I've got the champagne glass on my page. And if you're feeling festive, there's also um, a wine bottle to go with it. <laughs> and I've got a little tuxedo and a party dress for anybody who's oh who's wow the New Year's spirit. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. much. And let's give out the secret word today. You need the secret word in order to enter the contest. The or the drawing. It's not a contest. The drawing will be on this craftylife.com. On it's on our blog post that we have up now with this video. We're gonna add it to that same blog post. So you'll have all the information and all the links in there. There will be a raffle copter app that you click on, 
and it'll be a spot to that will ask you the secret word. So today's secret word, you guys all ready to write this down? It's looming, L-O-O-M-I-N-G. So it goes with uh, looming with the rubber bands. Please don't share that with anybody else. Let them know they need to watch the video. And we will draw the winner 24 hours after we put it up. So after the show, look for the rafflecopter and all the links on our blog. Well, this was a great show. We learned a lot. I learned a lot about Kim. I didn't realize and learned how to do looming that was much easier than I expected. Yeah. I bet we have some questions, though. Can I bring my cheering in? Sure. Let me go get one or two of them. <laughs> what, 73. <laughs> Do we have any questions for the craft or anything? Uh, we only had, um, really, I guess we just had one question. Most everybody did want to see um, you and, or Melody, you and May May uh, make some of those um, cute little projects live. Most people thought that would be a hoot to watch y'all do that. Did you do a loom project? Or no. for the craft challenge live? <laughs> and they Make them live? Live so they can see all your mess ups, I guess. <laughs> it was a long one for me because, you know, when I get the box, I have to kind of study. Just so, yeah, come in. Here's one of my tear ends. Come in. Here's my other one. Come in. I mean, this is as close as I get to that kid. Look right here. No, this is as close <laughs> as I get to see you. You just close? No, just come in. Come on this side. Stand in this hole right here. <laughs> here's Thomas <laughs> and here's Joe. Have y'all? Has any? Were there any questions for the kids? Are they been doing Q and A Periscope? I mean Periscope Q and As. So y'all might have asked them some questions already. Can you just come my leg. No. I like being in the little corner. Okay. Miss, were there any questions for the kids today? Uh, no, not yet. Now I just got to ask if I could make one of those looming things too. Now that really would be hilarious for me to try. That, that. would be fun. I would like to see you do that. Yeah, I I'd like to see him the rubber bands flying and you know flying across the room or smacking him in the face. <laughs> it would be funny because I bet Vince could do a football. Oh yeah, I've that got a tutorial for that on the channel. Football's over. There, <laughs> there it is. We'll do a football. Well, Christina said hey to Joe. And hey to Thomas. Hi, Christina. Hey. Um, okay. I think you should uh, have your whole family sit and do a football loom. Have them sit on the table. Say. Have a camera on the table. Not yes. tutorialing how to do it, but just to do it. Watch do it? Yeah. Thomas has done on my channel. He's done um, lanyard bracelets on my channel. Remember, you did that a long time ago. Paracord. Paracord. I call them lanyard. Paracord bracelets. But... He did a great job. People love that video, and I learned a lot from that, too. Hey, just so you guys know, later today, and I'll put a post on my Facebook group, Meme Made It, and so did I, Thomas will be doing his um, Q&A. Each one of my kids have been doing a Q&A on Periscope, and um, we're down to Thomas, and then there's been a request for me and Vince to do a Q&A. And those are super fun because we can interact with you instantly. Like, I know Vince is watching questions and comments and stuff, but I don't get to see those because they don't let me watch them. They distract me, so I get to sit here. But um, there will be another Q&A coming up. For Thomas, so be watching for that. Join up on Periscope and follow me at May May Made It on Periscope. All right, Miss Bell did ask a question for the kids. She wants to know what is it like being the son of a crafter? Do your friends ask you to, you know, get stuff made for them? No, I don't think any of my friends know who May May is. Some of them do, though, because some people, some people will say. Well, here's what happens to them. They'll say, well, what does your mom do for a living? And he's like, uh, she's a YouTuber. Like, they don't really know how to ex explain it, you know. So some of them know that I'm a YouTuber, but they don't really know the crafting part. What, um... To me, it's just kind of normal because we were, like, whenever she started, we were just helping her. We've always helped her, like, get stuff or do things. If she needed something, we've always helped her get it or do it. And so to me, it's just kind of normal. It's just whatever to me. Just... It's just always been there kind of thing. Now, for Josh, it's different. Josh is the one above Thomas. I don't think he'll fit in the screen if we brought him in. But for Josh, his friends always want vinyl stuff for their car. <laughs> you know, cutouts on the on the Cricut. They're always yeah. like, oh, my gosh, where would you get that? And he's like, I made it on my mom's Cricut. And so then they want them, too. So that's always fun. Now, somebody asked, do, they have any, do the boys have any New Year's resolutions? Oh, good question. No. 
Uh, mm-hmm. Joe, you need to have some. <laughs> Is that what yours needs to be? Yeah. Okay. What about you, T? Need to gain a little weight. Gain some weight? A little bit. Man, that'd be a nice resolution, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, I wish I had that one. Hey, I want to ask everybody who's watching to put in our comments after the video because we don't see what they're typing. So if they could put in after the video is done, go back and refresh the video and put in the comments what their New Year's resolution is. Uh, especially if it's a crafty New Year's resolution, it would be fun to see what everybody does and for everybody to go back there afterwards and see what everyone else is doing and uh, communicate with each other that way and try to encourage each other to do our resolutions. Anything else for us, Vince? Um, we did have one question for you. I don't know if you have time to answer it because it's kind of a detailed one, but um, Karen asked, um, how did you get started on YouTube? Super quick answer is I used to watch YouTubers, and I thought it was super cool what they did, and I was like, I think I can do this and I kind of secretly did it like not secretly but I kind of hid and did a video here and there and I kind of show Vince look I did this video and then I just decided I'm gonna try it I just tried it and I challenge everybody just try it and my community and I know Melody's community and I'm sure Kim's community of people that they get to talk to it's well worth it because you make so many friends and mm-hmm. so many good relationships and I mean just start out doing what you love don't try to be something you're not that's the trick. Don't try to do something you don't know how to do. So yeah. that's what I did. And what came first for you, Amy? Was it um, doing crafts or journaling? Crafts. Crafts. And in my videos, I do not claim to be an expert at anything I do. Uh, I When I'm doing crafting, I'm just showing you what I'm doing. I'm not saying I know the only way to do this. There's never only one way to do anything, I don't believe. I just show what I do and so you know you can just start a video just showing how you craft or what you do it doesn't have to be something that you know you think you're better than anybody else at or anything or you can't do as good as them well when we started I never thought I could do better than anybody else on YouTube I just did what I did and so that's just what I do I've noticed lately and I know Melody you're noticing this too with the growth of our channels because this is new to us I mean every time we have new growth it's new territory for us Mm -hmm. and so I've noticed that there's a lot more comments that are not as positive sometimes and that can really get to you if you let it but here's how I see it I I enjoy leaving my mistakes in a video for people because I may get, and Melody, you'll probably agree with this, I may get one person say, I can't believe you left that mistake in your video, but I'll get a hundred people say, thank you for leaving that mistake in so that I can see how to fix that when I make that mistake. So yeah. we just try to be polished and perfect. We just try to show you what we do. Yeah, and I learn from my mistakes, so I would rather leave a mistake in there and let everyone else learn from my mistake instead of making it themselves. And sometimes there's ways that you think you're doing something, especially with like my Cricut tutorials in design space. Um, there's, I have found with people asking me questions that they're following my video, but they're not doing everything specifically in order as I said so I say don't do it this way or you know because that's an easy mistake that everybody's doing wrong so if they know what not to do they're gonna learn better so when I'm crafting I make mistakes and I mess up and so it's an easy mess up so I leave it in and show you how to correct it yep me too well ladies our time is up any final thoughts don't need where it is <laughs> Thanks for having me. I really appreciate uh, being invited here. Well, thanks for coming. I was so excited when you said you would do it. I get excited for all our guests. <laughs> we do. We get giddy. We get so excited. All right. I want to tell everybody Happy New Year because it's New Year's Eve. Oh. Be safe. Have fun. And we hope to. Well, we'll see you guys on Monday, right in the new year. And we're going to have Sam. Yeah. Also, we need to encourage everybody, head over to the Facebook group and put questions for Cinnamon. There's a post, and we want questions for them. We want it to be hard questions, you guys. Ask her hard stuff. Um, Cinnamon is so much fun. You're going to have a good time asking her questions, so be sure to do that on our Facebook group. And I, Anything else, Mel? No, just don't drink and drive tonight. That is right, boys. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> One last word for you guys. Don't drive it all for him. <laughs> Don't drive. Happy New Year and roll tide. Oh, good. <laughs> roll tide. Love you guys. See you Monday. Bye.